share screen in just a minute, but um, I've got to say that uh, Stan Sunu is just such a wonderful advocate for ACES science um, for us. And when I met him, it's been uh, more, almost, maybe almost three years ago uh, when we first started working on this group. And a, a great dream, passion of mine was to get the ACES curriculum into medical schools. And it is happening. And it's, I mean, it was already happening, but but now it's happening in a, in a more formal way and um, and hopefully um, more broadly because we've got this incredible social media uh, platform tool to use. And so I'm gonna take a look at the chat and if y'all will, um, this is a new chat, I guess. Um, we have our own chat. I'm just yes, it should just share with, um, if people chat, it should just share with our specific breakout room. Good deal. Um, okay. And you're welcome to use uh, all the functionality of the Zoom room as well. If you need people to you know, use their microphones, that's okay too. Okay, great. Well, I'm wondering if in the chat, um, the ones, the people who are already members of an ACES initiative um, can uh, let me know if they're already members of an ACES initiative and the people who are not, um, just kind of raise your hand because I'm, I'm just interested in, in seeing how, how far we've spread. Um, I want us to be everywhere. So um, at any rate, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about ACES Connection um, while we're looking at all of this. So what we are is a um, social networking site and we are about creating a much better normal. And ACES science, I believe, has, is truly the nexus of what is happening in the world today between um, poverty, racism, inequity, uh, COVID-19, the political strife in which we are. And uh, trauma, I think, is at the, at the root of of all of it and is where uh, we can see how using this science to make our case and take it to policy can really make a huge difference. So um, we ask you, this is my invitation to invite you to, um, to join ACES Connection, it's free and you can help us create a much better, better normal. Um, let's see now. I'm shifting the slides the way that I was before. So um, there we go, I'll just do it this way. So this is my contact information, um, ccip at acesconnection.com. You can also find me um, on the site. And yes, that is Nadine Burke Harris. And I met her not far away from Emory um, two and a half years ago when she came to Atlanta to promote the deepest well. And um, that was an incredible moment. She's amazing and we're very blessed to have her uh, in, in the camp and as the Surgeon General for the state of California and if you'll allow me to get a slight bit political, um, she would make a heck of a Surgeon General for the United States of America. Um, now I know because you guys are, are aware of ACES Science but we say in ACES Science that the five areas uh, we like to see covered the epidemiology, of course, the impact on the brain, the impact on the body, looking at the epigenetics, which is what we just heard about from Dr. Carter in part, and then the resilience that the body and brain can heal with healthy relationships, healthy organizations, healthy systems, and healthy communities. And healthy systems, y'all are rolling, the medical school students here and um, are rolling into a system that the system needs to be healed um, as well as Dr. Carter just shared with us. We talk about the three realms of ACEs. It used to just be um, the pair of ACEs, but now we know that it is, uh, you know, what is happening in the home environment, what is happening in the community, um, and then what is happening in the environment with um, climate change, with, um, you know, much more um, intense weather. And now, of course, with the pandemic, um, it's another 
big factor. So ACES Connection supports communities um, to accelerate the use of ACES science to solve our most intractable problems. And how we do that is uh, we are a community of communities bringing people um, together on a grassroots level. Uh, I like to say that we're like a, um, a hydrangea blossom, you know, hydrangea that have those beautiful cones um, and it's one big flower, but then it's a whole lot of little flowers. We are a community of community um, blossoms among a blossom. And we are um, all about each community sharing their best practices based on ACE science and these communities learning from each other, which is very exciting. Um, we are gonna connect you with support. Uh, we have now, it's actually closer to 420 um, communities uh, that are in cities, counties, and states. I think it's 370 that are public communities, but we have a lot of communities that are in the process of building. There are 34,000 city, states, counties, 34,000 cities and counties in the United States. So we are not anywhere near the tipping point yet, but um, you know, y'all can help us do that. Um, we connect you with information. Um, these are just some of the, the articles that, that have been wonderful to, to share with um, in the medical community. Um, gosh, what a great story that is. Um, but we also have a weekly roundup and a daily digest that go out. We have a deep resources center. And then we have an Ask the Community feature, which allows you to ask the 47,000 plus members of ACES Connection about something. And I've got one I want to ask about, and I'm going to do it soon. It's about um, what has been the incidence of uh, increased complaints uh, about gut health because um, you know our guts are our second brains and yes the um, the developing brain is uh, affected by toxic stress but I think the developing gut is as well and I myself with a very high A score am living proof because um, <laughs> this pandemic has really taken me back to some root cause stress um, so we support the the ever-expanding community by educating people about ACE of science, engaging people in the movement, and connecting people. You know, Stan and I connected. Stan and I connected with people in California when we wanted desperately to get a medical ACEs education and medical schools group started. We connected with people in Texas. Then we connected with people in um, actually in Oklahoma who had already been working on the same project and. Suddenly, we're infusing ACEs science into, I'm not sure how many medical schools are involved in that community now. It's the community that I help, so I need to ask. But, um, but the um, ACEs and medical school public community for um, students and professors, I think we've got about 240 members in it. Now, I'll take you to that in just a minute. But, but look to ACEs Connection as being your Library of Congress, your Wikipedia, your Facebook and your Twitter of ACES Science. We've got resources and news digest and webinars. Oh my goodness, we have done almost 55 webinars, um, the ACES Connection staff since the pandemic started because we wanted to show what a better normal could look like because this opportunity, this pause that we're in right now, if we don't leverage it to change things, to make systemic change, we have wasted an incredible opportunity, I, I believe. We also have maps that will show you where other um, members of ACES Connection are, where, how we're doing in um, legislation all over the United States. I'll show you those in a minute. And then the stories, because it's the stories of, of the people who have um, experienced ACES, the people who are working to help people heal from ACES, um, that touch people's hearts and minds. And we know that when you can engage hearts and minds at the same time, that's when we learn and get engaged and inspired and wanna do some things. So our resources center um, takes you through ACES science, the multiple ACES surveys. Um, when I first learned about ACES science, it, you know, there were the 10 questions. Now there are many, many different surveys. And actually we say that anything that causes toxic stress um, is, an adverse childhood experience. 
lots of handouts. Um, I need to find a really good handout um, for patients to take to their doctors to explain to their doctors about ACE science. Um, policy and le legislation, sector specific, um, their Spanish language tools and um, handouts there, training modules, a whole lot more. Um, we, um, as I said, have many, many webinars. Um, I mentioned in the chat with um, Dr. Carter's presentation about resources for resilience. There's another training called um, the Community Resiliency Model that, um, gosh, I wish we could take it into hospitals and medical schools and um, all over because it helps people re-regulate when we are, you know, in, trapped in our um, lizard brains and we're not able to, to access our um, prefrontal cortex. Uh, the tools and the tips in uh, the, the education that we get in um, this community resiliency model uh, is, a, is a great help. I wish every, every hospital staff um, would do this because when people are not regulated, that's when we make mistakes. And I think it would <laughs> dramatically cut down on hospital error. Um, I used to work with a hospital safety consultancy and, and was astounded at the, the error um, rate in hospitals. And I just truly believe that um, there's a lot of PTSD among people who work in hospitals. And there's a lot of trauma inflicted um, from doctor to nurse, nurse to doctor, nurse to nurse, um, staff to, to, to um to the um, supporting staff in hospitals. And the more we can become trauma-informed at every level of care, the better we're off we're gonna be. Um, so connecting with know-how, you know, people who talk about these things that, that we're talking about right now, um, finding the communities. I know there are people on this call from all over the United States. We are in, I forget how many countries now. I think it's 33. Um, but everywhere there's a dot here, this means there's a community. So we can get you connected with the community. And we want you guys to start communities because you're the leaders, you're the thought leaders. And um, we need you. So um, we also have um, state ACES surveys. So wherever you are, um, you can find what the, the ACES um, load is in your state. Um, also, we have in many, for many states. Yeah. No, güey. Y mi computadora, yo creo que es algo sobre meeting, güey, porque. The, um, the BRFAS data, the behavioral risk. Um, behavioral risk. Golly, I just lost my train of thought, but the BRFAS data. Behavioral risk sur surveillance system data. Mm -hmm. um, and then also ACEs related legislation. And I know that you know you're in medical school, you're in medical school information, but seriously, when a doctor goes and gets involved, or a nurse, or somebody who is a frontline um, worker in um, seeing the impact that ACEs have on people's health, um, y'all can have a, a, a huge impact on changing policy to become trauma informed. Um, we also have a, a speakers bureau. So if you want to join our speakers bureau or want to find a speaker from our speakers bureau, um, that is available as well. Um, so again, we're an information resource. Um, we are um, connecting to, connected to the medical community. We have an ACEs and pediatrics community that has, I think, about 500 members, ACEs and education and higher and education has um, more than 2,500 members, I think, and eighth is in higher education. I'll show you the groups in just a minute. But, um, but uh, you know, we have seen uh, wonderful things happen in the last year that um, in the House Oversight Committee, um, Dr. Christina Bethel um, got to testify and, uh, and talk about the, the impact of ACEs on health and also the impact of positive childhood experiences, which is another part of the science that we are really um, focusing on and, and want to see expanded because all these kids who are coming out of um, this situation that we're in right now, they need positive childhood experiences. We know 
that a person who has ACEs but doesn't have positive childhood experiences actually um, a person who has ACEs but has had positive childhood experiences will do better in life than a person who has no ACEs and no positive childhood experiences. So we, we've got to make that um, a priority. Um, so we support communities. I'm going to switch to the website in just a minute. But um, as I say, we're a community of communities. Um, we hope to have a 1,000 communities within the next three years. We want to help you find the initiative in your community. Um, we are here to support you as Becky Haas um, from Northeast Tennessee, ACES Connection, who is now a, a, a great um, consultant helping communities grow and also helping um, hospitals and police forces learn how to become trauma-informed. Um, she really credits ACES Connection with so much for helping her um, connect to uh, potential clients and places where she can share her information. They've done an incredible job in Northeast Tennessee where the, the, um, the opium um, pandemic was, was just horrific. And uh, she has built a lot of hope and healing in that community. Uh, of course, as we said, I'm in the southeastern United States, but we've got um, com community facilitators all throughout the United States. And um, even though we're in the United States, we still do work worldwide. Um, these are Those were the community facilitators. Again, you can find us on the, the website. Um, we can help with starting resilient communities. We have an absolute playbook um, for helping people start and grow resilient communities. No matter what part of the country you're, you're in, I can connect you with a community facilitator in your area, and we can help you get a community going. And what that means is, is that we've got the playbook that helps um, communities come together, know how to form an ACEs initiative, uh, know whom to invite because it's so important to have every sector um, as a part of a community and we give you a tool for that our diversity equity and um, and inclusion tool and I'll share that with you in just a minute uh, so that um, you can have a, a viable group that really can change a community a community can see the um, attendance rate of students um, go up, the graduation rates go up, um, the crime rate go down, especially violent crimes um, in a trauma-informed community. Uh, you see, um, well, as an example, where I am in New Hanover County, um, North Carolina, uh, the county employees were given time off to take the community resiliency model training. And uh, they say on a survey that they, they, they are much more aware of each other. Um, they check in with each other more often. Um, they are um, you know, much more about realizing and embodying that uh, to be trauma informed, we don't traumatize already traumatized people. Um, but we can give you the meeting agendas, the, um, the, um, the strategic plans, um, how to form different steering groups, how to um, get a memorandum of understanding going with, um, with members, how to get a, um, a, a um, shoot, come on, Carrie, you can remember this, a, um, a proclamation, a proclamation for your city or your state or your county. But again, we know that um, when you start resilient communities, you want to include everybody at the table because if everybody's not at the table, nobody's at the table. But at the same time, we say that you've got to go with who you have. So if you've got five people um, and from five different sectors, or even if they're not from five different sectors, um, and by sectors, I mean a sector is um, the faith-based community, law enforcement, health care, mental health, um, education, um, businesses, um, the um, LBGTQ community, those are, um, well, that is more of a, um, of a, of a filter, but the, sec the sectors are those big, um, 
differentiations between businesses and education, whatever, but you want people from all of those different sectors there um, working with you because we say everybody involved all the time, um, everywhere. So um, again, we can help you with growing resilient communities, starting resilient communities. I'm gonna go to the, um, to the website. Um, let's see if I can reduce the size of my screen and take you to the, to the website. Um, let's see, hold on, I've got to get back down here, and, um, well, let me go on and show you this, too, because we've got so many different resources for, um, for educating. If you want to, you know, find out how to use documentaries to build and grow your communities, we've got that. Um, we want you to aggregate, we want you to track your progress, and, um, and when you look at where you are, then you can pivot, make new strategies. Um, we can help you aggregate um, where you've been, what you've done, um, and I'll show you this in just a moment, but you can be immortalized on ACES Connection as an ACES educator um, when you give an ACES science presentation, and I'll, I'll sh share that with you in a minute. Um, so, um, and, and by doing this, um, as you start an initiative, tracking all of this will help you get your initiative funded. Um, we can help with all manner of, of data. Um, I'll show you in just a second. Um, but joining the movement, getting involved with local government, um, making sure that those people are at your table um, because we've, we've got to influence the influencers. Um, building relationships to build your community, we help you learn how to do that, help you learn how to engage with people. Um, asking for a commitment is a way of engaging, to have a memorandum of understanding that you ask people to, you know, look at their own ACEs and, um, and then keep in mind as they go out into the community um, whether or not they are acting in a trauma-informed way, that they will take that mindset with them as they go. Um, helping to activate your communities. Um, to, um, to start developing policy. And I'll show you something about that in just a minute. There's another group, one of our sister organizations called CTIP, the Campaign for Trauma-Informed Policy and Practice that um, we work very closely with um, to help uh, people in throughout the United States know what's going on in their communities and also what's going on at the federal level um, so that we can affect change. Um, I wish every candidate had been talking about ACES science through the primaries and um, can't wait to hear Kamala Harris start talking about her friendship with Nadine Burke Harris and, um, and really touch on ACES science um, along the way because she understands that she gets it. She was on Nadine, Harris's, Nadine Burke Harris's board at the Center for Youth Wellness, which is very exciting to me. Um, we want you to celebrate what you're doing. Um, Barat knows I, I really um, urged him to, to get the information out, and he wanted to get it out about today on ACES Connection so we could clone it and get it out um, so that uh, the medical schools community would know about this. Um, and I hope that there's going to be some great follow-up story from um, today, this, this weekend's workshops um, and conference so that um, Next year, you'll have a built-in audience. Um, so we want you to, to recognize and celebrate your successes, um, make it fun, um, and um, we'll eventually um, share more about the cooperative of communities that we're starting um, that has a resilience tracker so that communities can see where they are um, as they move toward becoming a trauma-informed community. Um, so, um, you know, we know ACEs science is a social justice issue. Um, you know, parents need to know. We know that when a, a woman who is pregnant learns about ACEs science, that she is more likely to not have postpartum depression and she is less likely to abuse her child. And so the more that people know about this, um, I think the, the, the the fairer, more equitable 
and just society will have because some people get that that being um, overtly or even um, a microaggression racist act is damaging someone for life um, potentially. So we are so much about helping people, communities um, move from blame and shame and punishment to understanding, nurturing, and healing. And uh, but that's where the, the real healing happens, um, to be empathetic and compassionate and um, seek first to understand. We want people to know that they weren't born bad, um, that they aren't responsible for what happened to them when they were children, that we all coped the best we could. Um, if being hyper aroused was how we could cope to make sure that we were conscious of the, the hand that was coming at us, um, you know, that, that when we get to a safer place to not have to be that way, um, you know, helps us get to rest and digest and, um, and be healthier, happier people. Um, so we know that, you know, what we did as children that kept us alive, we don't have to do as adults, um, and that we can change. And I know I'm a living proof of that. Um, so we've got, um, a lot of resources. This, um, this slide presentation will be available for you. Um, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to um, find my other screen if I can. I'm going to stop sharing for just a minute so that then I can go back to the um, go back to the um, Chrome. As you're pulling that up, I just want to yeah. really thank you for that excellent talk. Um, I think ACES Connection is a really, really incredibly valuable resource for all of us. It's already established to create networking opportunities between professionals of all different um, you know, groups to connect and work on projects together, communicate. I get excellent articles every day in my inbox from different communities I'm a part of. Um, and, and like Ms. Carey said, you know, a conference like this was able to be publicized on ACES Connection to a variety of different people um, and lots of amazing resources. So I, I strongly suggest all of you, you know, create a free account um, and start perusing the website. I know a couple of people said in the chat, someone said, what an incredible wealth of resources. I can't wait to dig into the site. <clears throat> um, and Dr. Sonu said, ACES Connection is the go-to site community for upcoming events, research projects related to ACES and trauma-informed care. Please consider joining if you haven't done so already to stay connected. So um, thank you so much and please continue to show us. I think you're gonna maybe take us on a walkthrough of the website. Um, and if people have questions, can they post in the chat or ask sure. you those questions? Absolutely, I, I welcome those questions and, and you can even call on them um, and um, they can ask them. Ask sure. Me as we go, but I'm going to start out. You can see my screen, yes? Yes. Okay, great. You see all the kajillion tabs I have open. We're yes. going to start, start out on the, on the home screen of ACES Connection, and um, this is what the website looks like. Um, it's it's not really pretty right this minute because there's this post that, that has this, uh, well, I don't know. I love white space, so it is beautiful. There you go. But we're about preventing ACEs, healing trauma, building resilience, and it is a movement. And when you join ACEs Connection, which is free, you are joining the movement. Um, the site consists of this main blog that runs down the center of the page. It is always changing because anybody who's a member of ACEs Connection can post to ACEs Connection. We want to have an open platform. Um, members are vetted um, because when you, um, sign up, we do check your email address to make sure you're a legit person because we also want this to be a very safe place for people to come and, and, um, and write, uh, share, learn. So uh, that's the main um, blog down the, the center of the page, but down below the blog is the Ask the Community. And this is where if you have a research project you're working on or um, just want to know what the, you know, what people are talking about um, with regard to whatever. Are you a passionate, uh, are you a runner passionate about ending gender-based discrimination? Um, 41 people have seen this since Allison posted it um, about four days ago. And um, we have the economic impact of ACEs, whatever you want to, um, 
look for or whatever you want to find out if you just post it here it the chances are it's going to be seen um, 198 views of establishing trauma expertise for testimony in child welfare cases. This is my buddy Caitlin Levine in New Orleans, and you know she's looking for this information, and um, she's had um, three people reply to her about that. So um, that's another aspect of, or another feature of the website that's that's been. Um, incredibly valuable to, to people. I helped a, a grad student at uh, Florida A&M. Um, she was actually studying um, the health of African-American women, but I helped her get her blog post done, put her post in um, the Ask the Community. Um, she got, and then it put, plugged her into the network of people that I know on ACES Connection, I also do the social media for ACES, some of the social media for ACES Connection. So I posted it on LinkedIn and on Twitter and Facebook, and she had almost 500 responses to her survey looking for information about African-American women and increased likelihood of high blood pressure, heart disease, um, kidney disease, um, stroke, and um, anyway, looking for that information. So. Um, so the other parts of the, the home page, again, this is where you can post. Um, we do, we are beginning to take donations. We are a nonprofit, 501c3. We've been supported by um, generous, generous grants from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the California Endowment. But um, we are looking for other funding sources. We just got a grant from um, Blue Shield of California, um, and we're grateful for that, but we are about to start encouraging some donations. Um, this is where you come when you want to join. Um, we have widgets on the side of the page, which I didn't know what a widget was until I came to work here, but um, in March, we started collecting anti-racism resources, and you can go to this resource, and we have been absolutely committed to keeping this updated, um, and this is your, this is a go-to for racial trauma, historical trauma, and healing resources. Um, as as we get more information, oh, there's that beautiful graphic that was in Dr. Carter's um, presentation. Anyway, um, as we see new things um, come online, we add them into the correct um, category of the. Um, this this widget. Um, so I urge you to, to plow through here. This is an incredible <coughs> model right here, the interactive layers of trauma and healing from the Wise Center in, um, in California. Um, institutional racism and the social work profession, a call to action. Um, actually, Dr. Carter's presentation would be a wonderful presentation to add to this. Um, so I'm hoping that there'll be a write-up about that and we can share that. Um, so I, I invite you to look through um, this resource and because um, there, that's, that was just one um, category from this. Police brutality and reform, anti-racism works. How can you kids about race and racism? And then um, our being community resources. I think we probably could add um, um, something about um, health disparity. I'm not sure where that is in here, but it probably is in here, but it would make sense to have something about health disparity because that is certainly what we are witnessing now, um, the impact of health disparity. Um, then also um, COVID-19, when it hit, we immediately um, got this widget Put together. Okay, so I've got five more minutes with the trauma-informed education system. So we've got five more minutes here, Barat. That yep, right? that's correct, and then we'll be moving back to the main room. Okay, I'll plow through this quickly. So this is where you can find all manner of um, COVID-19 resources. Um, all of our webinars are here. Um, blog directory, growing resilient communities, how to get in touch with us. Um, I'm going to show you this just really quickly because it's pretty dang cool is um, we, as I said, we're a community of communities. 
um, you can look through here. Once you're a member, you can join any of the communities that are um, that are here. The ones that could be of great interest to you guys, um, I think, would be um, ACES Connection for Birth Workers, um, ACES in Early Childhood, if you're um, a pediatrician. Um, we do have um, ACES in Maternal Health, which um, there is lots of representation about um, the African-American um, disparity in um, deaths, ACEs in medical schools, ACEs in nursing science, ACEs in pediatrics. Um, I just invite you to plow through here and see where you want to plug in, but also to jump into your um, geographic community because that's where the, the people are on the ground and doing the work um, building the community. So let's see, have we had any engagement with groups in law enforcement? Yes, we have. Um, and I know you mentioned engaging individuals for a responsive representative group, but have departments been responsive? Um, yes, interestingly, um, Paul, um, I did a better normal with Becky Hodge and the woman who is the executive director of the, um, oh, she is the um, Association of Police Chiefs in the state of Tennessee, but Becky does work all over the country, and we are going to be doing um, the CTIP call, the Campaign for Trauma-Informed Practices and Policies. Um, the CTIP call on October the 21st, Becky is going to be doing a presentation on working with police departments um, to help them become more trauma-informed. And the best thing that can happen for that is um, read My Grandmother's Hands by Menachem, um, Resmond Menachem. And if we could get every police officer in the country to read that book, it would be so much help. Um, let's see what else. Um, thank you, um, Shannon, for um, acknowledging all the resources. Um, we are, I mean, it's deep and wide and broad. Um, and you can go on here, you could spend, you could spend two years on here and never get to all of it. Um, so I just invite you to do that. And um, yeah, we should definitely explore how race-based trauma adds to the adverse childhood experiences of youth and ways to heal and prevent. And we do look at that and we do have, um, on staff, in fact, and a whole series of um, wonderful um, YouTube. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. If you go to the ACES Connection um, channel on YouTube, um, my colleague Ingrid Cochran, who teaches at um, teaches college in um, Nashville, it's one of the most popular um, webinars that we've done. Is she talks about um, Let's see, ACES Connection, Better Normals. I'll find it and, and, and share it, but um, she has, we have had many, many, many um, webinars on racial trauma and how to be anti-racist. Um, yeah, she's had 706 views in three months, but I invite you to check these out. But I, I hear you about, um, about um, the, um, let's see, what was it? about racial trauma in youth. And she talks about parenting and how African-American ways of parenting can actually increase the likelihood of, of some trauma. So um, it's, it's, it's fascinating and she knows this backwards and forwards. And I think you would, we can connect you to her. Um, so are we finished? I, I don't wanna keep talking if we're, yeah, no worries. Actually, we'll get a notification when they want us to come back to the main room. Oh, it looks like it's happening now. So just the last wrap up. Thank you so much, Ms. Sip, for sharing your time with us. Um, how can people contact you if they want to get in touch with you? I'm putting my um, email right here. Um, csip at acesconnection.com um, or 404-408. 9566 is my cell phone number. Feel free to text me. Um, I'd love to help you find your community. I'd love to help you start a community. Y'all are the leaders, the doers, the healers, the creators of health, and, and we have got to start measuring our success as a nation by the health and happiness of our people as opposed to what our economics looks like. 
and y'all are the people who can change this. And I love you for being here. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you, Stan. Thank we'll see you, you back so in the main much. room. Okay, Doug. Bye-bye. Again, first breakout session with the trauma-informed 